What if I told you the Emerald Tablets of Toad were not written by the Atlantean Priest King? The tablets were not discovered inside the pyramid, and they do not date back some 36,000 years BC. In fact, they do not even exist. Everything you've ever been told about the Emerald Tablets, plural, of Toth is deceptive. My name is NEXT, and today we set the record straight. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe now so you can receive more videos just like this one with explanations and investigations into the ancient mysteries. The Emerald Tablets of Toth is a problematic paradox that confuses many. However, the very first line in the historical tablet of alchemical tradition is a declaration separating that which is true from that which is false. Where the Emerald Tablets of Toth cause confusion, the real Emerald Tablet of alchemical tradition is said to cause creation. Moreover, the tablet's message is one of deep truth and discernment but modern messengers are missing the mark. The so-called experts on the Emerald Tablets of Toth are misleading people to believe they are actually revealing secrets. Unaware of the inadequacy of their own research, they homogenize rather than do homage. Many of those who cite the text without really understanding it, but we're here today to set the record straight. So who am I and why does my opinion matter? Well, it really doesn't. It's your level of development, experience, and ability to discern for yourself. That's what really matters. In fact, the reason I'm making this video is because I'm someone who's not only passionate about the Emerald Tablet, but I'm also someone who encourages others to practice discernment while conducting their own researches. If you have ever researched the Emerald Tablets online, you probably come across one of my images. Look familiar? It's quite understandable why these photos, depicting the translucent base relief, would find such favorable reception on the internet. Previously, one of the only images available was this illustration taken from a 17th century text. Now, I've never granted permission for other researchers or authors to use my original photos of the Emerald Tablet. However, since the initial upload of my photos, They've made their way across the web in blog articles and videos all over YouTube trying to explain the Emerald Tablets. In spite of the unauthorized use, I never complained because I feel the message is more important than the messenger. But the message is often missed and the tablets are conflated through careless research. My intent is to not only promote the Emerald Tablet, but raise awareness around it and help people better understand its purpose and meaning. And so we've even given away the Emerald Tablet as part of our monthly contest for readers who subscribe to the Adept Initiates email list. I believe the Emerald Tablet is a tool. As you'll soon discover in this video, the Emerald Tablet can be used as a vehicle for discerning hidden truths about the nature of reality and the metaphysical makeup of man. So stick with me if you want to learn more about something that has the power to awaken the center of your psyche and directly touch the deepest portion of your inner being. I took these photos nearly half a decade ago, but my research into the Emerald Tablet goes back even further, as you're about to discover. About 10 years ago, I took up a serious inquiry and began seriously researching the Emerald Tablet because of my pre-existing interest in alchemy. However, things became really confusing when I came across the Emerald Tablets of Toth, the Atlantean Priest King. I had already developed an interest in the Emerald Tablet as a result of my Rosicrucian studies. For more than a decade, I had been researching the tradition extensively, gleaning from every book, monograph, and manuscript that I could get my hands on. And of course, it helped that my wife shares a similar pension in the Royal Art of Alchemy. We traveled together across the country in search of esoteric libraries and museums. The Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum in San Jose, California, our favorite, features an impressive alchemy exhibit. But here's the problem. The author of the Emerald Tablets of Toth claims to have discovered multiple tablets. However, the Rosicrucian tradition, which includes alchemy as part of its historical timeline, acknowledges a single Emerald Tablet. So what's really going on here, and how many tablets are there? Let's go straight to the source and trace the powerful evolution of one of humankind's most illuminating secrets. By reading the preface of the Emerald Tablets of Toth the Atlantean, one can learn about how the author allegedly claims to have a connection to the Great White Lodge, which also works through a pyramid priesthood in Egypt. Doriel, the author, claims to have recovered, translated, and then returned the Emerald Tablets to the Great Pyramid of Giza, and he was supposedly allowed to publish his results, but only with permission of the Great White Lodge. So is this for real? Does this Brotherhood of the White Temple really exist? I was led to believe so. 
and a simple Google search revealed the location of their headquarters, the Shambhala Ashrama in Colorado. Needless to say, my curiosity kicked in and I felt called to explore. According to the author's version of the Legend of the Emerald Tablet, there are additional tablets. My research was now taking my wife and I on a quest to Colorado in search of answers. If only we could meet the Brotherhood, surely they would provide more details. We traveled over a thousand miles from California to Colorado in search of the Brotherhood of the White Temple's Lodge to find out more, but we found something else. I have always felt drawn to Toth. Toth is the Greek name for the Egyptian Netter Jahuti. Now, it should go without saying that I was excited at the prospect of visiting this lodge, meeting the Brotherhood, and learning more about the author in these additional tablets. But on our way, all of that changed when we discovered something more something that changes the course of our adept expedition. Unfortunately, the organization does not accept unsolicited visitors. In fact, they have signs posted to keep people out. We did not drive all this way to arrive and be turned away. My wife grabbed the wheel while I grabbed the mobile and began digging deeper. And what I discovered about the author of the Emerald Tablets of Toth, the Atlantean Priest King, was as perplexing as it was disappointing. Then I had a change of heart when the esotericist in me figured out what was really going on with these emerald tablets. So what then has my research revealed? Well, before entertaining a study in the emerald tablet or emerald tablets, it is most important, it is vital that we distinguish the difference between the two. On one hand, we have the emerald tablets of Toth, the Atlantean, and then we have the emerald tablet, singular, of the hermetic tradition of alchemy. Now where we have alchemy, we have initiation, and the path of the initiate is always threefold. You have three degrees or three spheres. From the alchemist's point of view, this would be the philosophicum, theoreticum, and the practicum in Latin. In our terms, it's basically the philosophy, the theory, and of course, the most important, the practical application, the work, the great work. And so, to honor this age-old tradition, I've decided to split this video up into three parts. So it's a three-part video series exploring the Emerald Tablets versus the Emerald Tablet. In this video, we're going to not only discuss the problem, but also demonstrate what my research has revealed about the Emerald Tablets of Toth the Atlantean and the work's author. Dr. Doriel. The Emerald Tablets of Toth was first published in 1939 by Dr. Doriel or Maurice Doriel or Dr. M. Doriel and sometimes simply just Doriel, which is not even his real name. Doriel is only the pen name that Claude Dawkins identifies with when writing about flying saucers, aliens, nuclear bomb threats, a race of serpent people living under the Gobi Desert, and of course, his precious emerald tablets of Toth the Atlantean. And Dr. Doriel is not even a doctor. In fact, it's a self-appointed title. His highest level of education was only elementary school. He's pointed out in his early work, personal experiences, that he was actually born with the ability to read and write and fully understood math, chemistry, and physics all before the ripe age of one. However, it doesn't seem to serve him well as the employment record shows that Doriel has only held jobs as a taxi driver, a department store clerk, and he worked for a brokerage firm as a salesman. Watch out for those salesmen. Discovering, translating, and returning the Emerald Tablets back to the Great Pyramid is not Doriel's only outrageous claim. In fact, he has a long list ranging from being the uh, appointed supreme voice of the ascended masters to visiting the spiritually, physically, and mentally evolved beings in Tibet and being courted into their underground headquarters. For a full list, I go more in depth in an article that I wrote entitled The Emerald Tablets of Toth versus The Emerald Tablet. It has been published to adeptinitiates.com. So if you want to check out the article and get the full list, you can go to adeptinitiates.com. Moreover, these attainments didn't seem to help Doriel as he was not only conceptually but also textually dependent on the templates of popular science fiction writers and occult authors of his time. In fact, recent research shows how Doriel plagiarized H.P. Lovecraft, among others, including borrowing concepts from the Shaver Mysteries, 
which was a popular feature in the Amazing Stories publication of his day. And we know that Doriel was a fan and likely inspired by these concepts because he actually wrote into the magazine's fan forum section. So Doriel claims to have discovered, translated, and then returned the Emerald Tablets to the Great Pyramid in Egypt. He's also claimed to travel to Tibet, India, and Mexico. However, his passport would suggest otherwise, as there's a lack of stamps. And when questioned about that, his world travels suddenly became astral travels. We know this because one of his ex-wives had denounced him in front of his disciples, which uh, ultimately led to a divorce. Obviously, she was upset because she uh, believed that he was cheating on her, and this resulted in being featured in the LA newspaper about the occult leader's divorce. So we know that Doriel was a cheater, that he borrowed concepts, he was a plagiarist, and so this would give us an indication about his character, but what about this brotherhood of the Great White Temple and the Lodge? Well, the concepts the Great White Brotherhood and Ascended Masters have long been known in Theosophy. In fact, guided by Ascended Masters, Madame Blavatsky founded the Theosophical Society. So this would serve as some inspiration for the Brotherhood of the White Temple, which Doriel officially incorporated on April 11th in 1942 before appointing himself as the president of the same organization that he claims gave him instruction on where to find the Emerald Tablet. So all of this information gives us a sense of the author's character. However, I do believe that Doriel may have had a good reason for his false narrative as it relates to esotericism, which I will cover in the third video. The next video, video two, which I'll release next week right here on my YouTube channel, will focus on the actual Emerald Tablet the legend of the Emerald Tablet of the alchemical tradition. So stay tuned. Make sure if you like this video to subscribe now and click the bell icon so that you can get updates for future videos. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a like down below. If you don't like the video, let me know why in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.